Hi guys, my name is Anna and in this video we're going to be going over this final stage of aerobic respiration called electron transport chain. So please grab a piece of paper so you can draw along with me and take some notes. And then without further ado, let's just jump into this topic. So many of you find this topic quite complicated. I mean, understandably so. It's one of the probably hardest topics in A-level. But I do think it's overcomplicated for no reason really. And hopefully this video will help you to simplify it on how to actually learn and understand what is going on during the electron transport chain. Um, you need to remember, guys, that this process is occurs in mitochondria at the creste and the way to simplify it is to actually think about the components of this process. So let's separate it into electrons, protons, reduced NAD and reduced FAD which were, were, um, were made by a cell during the earlier uh, reactions of the aerobic respiration and then we're going to have electron carriers and as finally, ATP synthase. And if you can think of electron transport chain in this way, guys, and in terms of those components, you actually will simplify the whole process with no problem. So let's just jump into it. It's very important to actually just draw uh, the creste, and we're gonna learn um, how to do this in a moment. So basically, let's guys start drawing. So we're gonna draw the membrane in which we're gonna embed a couple of proteins called electron carriers. So we're gonna draw three and two little ones in between. And finally, we're gonna draw ATP synthase as a final component of the electron transport chain. So there will be one unit embedded in the membrane, and then the other one is going to be kind of below. And before we jump into this process, it's important to understand the orientation of this process. So the ATP molecule will be produced in the matrix, okay? So guys, label the lower half of this diagram as matrix, and then therefore the above side of the diagram and above this membrane is gonna be intermembranal space of the mitochondria. Going back to our components, the first step we're gonna understand is where do electrons come from, okay? So guys, remember that throughout the aerobic respiration, the cell has been making reduced NAD and reduced FAD, which are the electron carriers, and as they arrive to the matrix near the creste, they will release the electrons, okay? Those electrons will be raised to a higher energy level, and what they will do, they'll be then transferred across electron carriers. It's important to understand that in this case, electrons carry energy. Remember, energy can't be produced or destroyed. So in this case, they're carrying, electrons are carrying energy, and the medium for those is electron carriers that are proteins that are amended, embedded in the creste membrane, okay? So they basically can flow through those and get carried through those, and therefore then eventually electrons will be released back into the matrix of mitochondria. And here's another component that we've mentioned in our previous uh, slide, is oxygen is one of the key components which we can refer to as a terminal electron acceptor. And as you can see guys here, that oxygen will accept two hydrogens and two electrons in order to produce a molecule of water. And this is why water molecule is actually a byproduct of a respiration reaction. So as a summary of electrons, they got donated by reduced NAD and reduced FAD. They then got raised to a higher energy level. They then got carried by electron carriers. And then as they got carried across, they release their energy, which we'll discuss what it will be used for. And then as electrons journey ends, they're gonna be accepted by an oxygen molecule, which acts as a terminal electron acceptor. So this covers us for electron component. So for the second component of electron transport chain, let's go through protons. So as electrons move through the electron carriers, they release their energy. And that energy is in turn going to be used to pump protons across from the matrix into the intermembrane space, creating a high concentration gradient in the intermembrane space. And this high concentration gradient, we're gonna to refer to it as a high electrochemical gradient because H plus has a charge and it also has a chemical gradient. And because we have built this high electrochemical gradient, it's now going to push 
protons through the ATP synthase in the direction from intermembranal space and the matrix, and this will result in the production of an ATP molecule. Okay, so you can see now that ATP is produced, we've produced also water, and basically, you know, the reduced NAD and reduced FAD, they become NAD and FAD, and then they're going to go back to the previous reactions and uh, go back to the Krebs cycle and go back to the link uh, reaction and the glycolysis, and they will go further and pick up more electrons. To summarize this, it's important kind of to see the overview of uh, mitochondria, where it happens, just kind of to give you uh, this better overview. So if we label matrix and intermembranal space, basically, guys, as this reaction electron transport chain occurs in the cristae, let's draw the electron carriers here. And so just to show you that the protons are pumped from the matrix into the intermembranal space, and then there will be some ATP synthases and basically the ATP will be produced on the side of the matrix then can be then released to the rest of the cell. Guys, and this is the end for electron transport chain. I hope you enjoyed this video and it made it easier for you to understand this process. Please like and subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.